It's Saturday on uh, Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Veronica Dan Ikoi. I'm not here alone. I have my beautiful co-hosts. Some of them you haven't seen their faces, and so they will be introducing themselves this morning. Ladies, good morning. It's good to have good you morning. on the show. Damola, you were here last week, so it's good to have you here once again. I'm but Uluwa Tobiloba. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to have you as well as Vina. So, ladies, let's begin with you, Vina. Introduce yourself to the audience. Okay, uh, I am Vina Peters. I am a broadcaster. I, uh, you know, broadcasting business isn't a small business. So Absolutely. We have to always keep our wits on, keep, you know, everything in progress. But throughout the week, it's been huh, hectic, I must say. Because mm. being a broadcaster, where I work, actually, I have to train. Okay. So training is not a small business. Absolutely. Yeah, not. but I think this um, weekend is just for me to rest, relax, and get and ready. be taken care of. <laughs> I'm telling you, <laughs> most importantly, you know, because next week is going to be another busy week, so we just need to relax and get into the ne new week. All right, Uluwa Tobi Lover, good to have you. Oh, it's such a delight to be here. Right. My name is Uluwa Tobi. I'm an entrepreneur, right? Um, I sell the popularly known shea butter in strawberry, mm -hmm. vanilla, minty, and native variants. Yeah, you guys, don't worry. You have some <laughs> of the show. Then I'm also an events host, MC Compare. Mm. Um, I'm a mom. Mm, right. I have two boys. Oh, oh beautiful. So that's good. Good, yeah. good. Good to have you on the show. How, how was your week? Though? Oh, my week was <laughs> beautiful. I ended up um, um, hosting the Africa Revenue Summit, and it was two days, it was busy, back to back, I mean, but afterwards I was able to rest. Mm. And I think that in preparation for resumption next week for the children, I think I'm in that space already for of it. resting. Yes. All right, Damola? Yes, so I'm glad to be back here mm -hmm. again. I'm an entrepreneur. I run two businesses, mm. basically. So I run a video production agency. We tell brand stories, and I also do wearable tech fashion accessories. With that, you have um, smart bag. <laughs> I know it's a mouthful, yeah. you know. So by wearable tech, you have handbags that can charge themselves, right. you know, that can, you can use to charge your devices on the go. They have built-in batteries. You have smart glasses like the one that I'm wearing. You can actually take your calls, listen to music, and, you know, control your voice assistance. So we basically sell, you know, very cool um, fashion accessories that are, you know, tech-enabled. And uh, my week has been, it, it was, it started off rough, but then I, it, I ended up enjoying it because we made progress on the technology you know, that we were trying to put in the big bag. So we had been trying it back and forth, and then we finally made a headway, and I'm just so excited, and I can't wait to release it to the market. Absolutely. <laughs> right. Well, everybody... A majority of uh, TVC viewers know me, Veronica Danik Boy, that uh, I do both the news and I'm here as well. So you'll be seeing these faces on a regular uh, Saturdays. Uh, they will be part of uh, the Your View team for Saturdays. All right, now let's quickly take a break. Where we return, we will be reviewing our papers. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. All right. Thank you for staying with us. It's time now for us to look through the paper headlines. And I will begin with uh, the Punch newspaper. The major story here says uh, Sudan internal war. Why it's difficult to evacuate trapped Nigerians. The federal government is speaking. And uh, some writers here says war makes flight impossible, begs for ceasefire. Students narrate near-death experience as over 1,700 appeal for evacuation. And then we have some other stories. Suspended Adamawa wreck, ignored summons, uh, location unknown. Einek is speaking. Another story here says, I can't return to palace with only six wife, Queen Naomi speaking. And then we have a good Samaritan saved me from collapsed Lagos Stadium floodlight. Uh, a para par lifter is uh, also speaking. Census risks postponement over funding logistics uh, problem. Then we have this story here. Lekki Shanti is where big men meet sex workers. Uh, Abel Kutamog can't explain my father's corpse whereabouts son. Who has what story here? Anyone has a story here? 
you don't have okay so let me quickly take this uh, major story talking about uh, the internal war happening in sudan so there are some nigerian students there and they called on the nigerian government to evacuate them because um, there's been the intensified war there and there's been a lot of deaths so over uh, a hundred hundreds of persons have been killed but the federal government is saying that um, it is impossible to evacuate them um, from there uh, because of uh, the fire so uh, the the government is begging for a ceasefire and uh, some students are already narrating the near-death experiences that they have had uh, as uh, with regards to what is going on uh, there all right so let's quickly move to the nation newspaper and uh, the major story there says buhari to tinubu i am waiting to welcome you as president I am waiting to welcome you as president, says, made the 29th handover date sacrosanct. Pardon me if I've hurt you, president tells Nigerians. And uh, we have uh, another story here. APC opposition parties in battle of wits over Agbajabi Amila's successor. And then uh, this story, INEX suspended Adamawa uh, Rex whereabout unknown. INEX suspended Adamawa Rex we're about unknown, why we didn't review presidential election result. And then uh, a sad story here, gunmen kill five policemen, couple in emo ambush. Anyone has a story here? I have a story. You do? Yes. Okay. On page seven of the Nation newspaper. Okay. Um, it says, JAM directs UTME candidates to print examination notification slips. All right. But it gave a window saying that from yesterday to Monday 24th, you have to print your slips. So um, this is like calling out or calling on all applicants of JAM to please print your examination slips. You may not hear of it, but it's in the newspaper today. And I feel like it's important for us to disseminate that information to people Absolutely. who are in that space. Who are in that space uh, for them to quickly do so. And uh, but let me take this uh, major story now, talking about uh, the president, Muhammadu Buhari. Uh, talking to the president-elect that he can't wait to welcome him as uh, president. And he also went ahead to say that uh, the May 20, the 29th uh, handover is sacrosanct. Nothing is going to change that date. Now, this is on the background that a lot of persons have been calling for interim government and all of those. And then he went ahead to say that, um, to appeal to Nigerians that um, he is sorry if anybody is hurt by his actions uh, that he has taken and he is sorry and he apologizes to them and that um, he would not be staying back he would be retiring to his dara home and then if things are not you know okay with him with regards to his dara home where he's hearing the attentions or anything that he, he could move <laughs> to niger just to get some respite after eight years of seven nigeria he mm -hmm. needs it doesn't he it's even more than eight more than, years yeah, yeah because he's, he's <laughs> yeah. been governor he's been minister for petroleum mm -hmm. he's, i mean he's, he's, he's been, been in government for a he's while. also been in military also he's been the head so of state it's time for him to rest. relax rest. and rest <laughs> <laughs> so he needs to stay far away uh from uh, nigeria and nigerians but he has apologized in case uh, there are those who are not satisfied with his performance. We're still holding grudges. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let's move now to the vanguard. And the major story here says partisan Rex hurt 2023 polls badly. Um, INEC source defend Yakubu says he didn't appoint them. How Buhari Senate cleared partisan Rex. Now, uh, Buhari to Nigerians, thank you for tolerating me, asks for forgiveness from those he hurt. Uh, groups want Tinubu to prioritize restructuring. Uh, Kaduna man kills girlfriend <coughs> for jilting him. That's an interesting one. I have that story too. All right. Uh, hoodlums kill five policemen, a couple in Imo. Delta, what's in the pipeline for worried? And divorce saga, why is the world thumbing up for Hakimi? Did he act smart? Nigerians answer. We had that conversation last week. But then, Toby, your story here. Yes, Kaduna man kills girlfriend for jilting him. And sometimes I just, I mean, reading this just really breaks my heart because I'm like, what would the girl have done, mm. you see? And the story goes on to say that... Um, the man said he had spent so much on her 
at her. So <laughs> Chickens that warrant him killing her. Yeah. Really, that's a life. Mm -hmm. And you know, you know, the fact that you even, I mean, he injured her so much by the time she was at the hospital, they said she was dead. Right. That's sad. And so I just imagine how much would you have spent in exchange for a life? That's it. You see? And uh, he's, he's, he's cooling his heels yeah. in the police cell. Yeah. I, I want and to. And it's even the fact that he's not even remorseful about it. About it. And he's saying, um, I spent so much on her. You know when it is that a man feels, okay, he I own her. this person. Mm. And because I've spent yeah, so much. So, so much. it's practically, I, mean, I bought you ticket. with the monies I spent. So mm -hmm. you're my property. That's, anyway. That's the next sad. story you have is really it's a sad story. It's sad, actually. Right. You have another story here, Toby. Buhari to Nigerians. Okay, we've taken that earlier. Yes. Yeah. Talking so about yes. Uh, thank you. I think for, all the all the dailies for tolerating me. Yes. And, and I uh, think I like the the choice of word he used. You know, okay. tolerating. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was it was very intentional and deliberate. I mean, he would have said thank you for the last eight years, mm. but he used the word tolerate, mm. and I think that it was intentional about passing that message across and not just feel like, well, I was the president, I'm done. Mm. You see, and that was very quite sensitive of him. All right, we need to quickly go on a commercial break. When we return, we'll continue the newspaper review. Just stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thank you for staying with us. We're still reviewing the newspaper headlines. And right now, I'll be moving to the Sun newspaper. The major story here says uh, National Assembly leadership, northern aspirants give up ambition. National Assembly leadership, but northern aspirants give up ambition. And some writers here, southeast, south-south fight for top positions. APC plans endorsement meeting in Aso Rock. And then uh, we move to another uh, story here. Tinubu not on sick bed. Kalu, Archbishop Kaigama describes Senate Chief Whip as God's uh, project in the making. Uh, then Buhari asks for forgiveness, says, I can't wait to go home. Uh, holds final sala in Aso Rock. Governors can, as the Christian Association of Nigeria, others felicitate Muslims. Uh, emulate Awulawa Ganya Damstel, Southwest uh, Governors, Ahane ZPG, Igbo Groups, Ahamba, other set agenda for Iwan Yawu, and uh, Amwai, New Sambisa Forest in Delta. All right, who has what story here? Okay, I have yeah, on uh, page, this page 28 of the Sun newspapers, which says, the National Assembly leadership. Yeah. Yes, Northern aspirants give up ambition, and the story focuses on the leadership, mm. leadership of the Senate, and how the Northern leaders have decided to, you know, pick a Christian Senate president instead, so that we have a balance in the, you know, top three, you know, government officials that you know would be sworn in mm. on the 29th of May. And uh, this, the paper also says a senator who revealed the latest development to Saturday's Sun said leaders from the North and stakeholders in the ruling all progressive party prevailed on the aspirants to allow Christian from the South to get the position, just like I said, you know, mm. to you know, maintain balance. And then, you know, they also said that, uh, you know, there is a move to prevent a repeat of a Bukola Sarakis emergence. Mm -hmm. And that means that, you know, the position of the uh, pres Senate president would, if they decide to pick a unanimous candidate later on, this move would be to prevent, you know, a repeat of, you know, an opposition party getting to become the Senate president. And this is to ensure that there is no chaos, you know, within, you know, the Senate House when the new administration 
no, comes up. Absolutely. So that conversation had been on for a while yeah. because uh, they had been talking about zoning uh, because the president is uh, the president elect is from the southwest. And we also have his deputy, who they are both Muslims, his vice, yeah. uh, the vice presidential president elect, both Muslims. So the conversation is okay, if they are Muslims, let the third person be from a, uh, be a Christian and should come from the south so as to ensure unity, balance, fairness, justice, Absolutely. equity, the conversation that we've been having mm. before the election, mm -hmm. during the election, <laughs> and now up. after the election. So <laughs> They are now saying that, okay, we are zoning it to the south, but we are narrowing it down to either the south-south okay. and the south-east. And then there's also the conversation of, okay, the south-east has held this position for since 1999, yeah. for five consecutive period times. So now it should move to the south-south. But then the major issue here is that they are looking at a Christian from the south. That is what uh, they are concluding on. And the, the north mm -hmm. has said, okay, we are handing off over. this matter of, uh, okay, it should come to us and all of it. So uh, another story you have here, Damola. Yeah, I have um, Tinubu not on sick bed. Yeah. And this statement was made by the chief whip of the Senate, press, of the Senate that Senator Oji Uzokalu. And then he made uh, this uh, statement during the celebration of uh, his uh, 63rd birthday. I think what he's trying to do here, or the statement was meant to dispel rumors that you know, the president-elect is on a sick bed and also to manage uh, people's expectations. You know, before the elections, there were rumors everywhere about the health of the president-elect. And... The senator just used this opportunity to clear, you know, the, air. To, to clear the air and okay, then to okay. reassure us of um, a very sound president that would be sworn in on the... May the 20th. Yeah, and he also um, mm -hmm. talked about his re-election as a senator. Mm. He said he, he was scared that he almost lost the elections and then he relied on, um, if not for the beavers and, you know, the electoral process that was used, he would have lost the election. So he also used that opportunity to... You know, referred to the credibility of, of the, the elections election. that you know helped him, you know, emerge, emerge right. at the as, end of the day. Yeah, exactly. All right, that's it. So I think that it's important to you know begin to have conversations like this when we say Tinubu is not sick. You know, most times we hear rumors, and that kind of like fuels the way we interact, the way we 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 even discuss as as citizens. Mm. So if the government is more accountable about the health of people in government, you know, and um, um, and be transparent about it. I think it will go a long way, you know, in dousing the the current tension that we have in the in the country, based mm. on the fact that you know somebody may not be too healthy, you know, to go through the next couple of years. And I think that it was a good one for Moji Zokalu. Thank you. Right. So I have an inside story here. Now we recall what happened over the weekend last week in Adamawa, where the resident electoral commissioner declared. Um, Asha Tubinani as governor uh, elect without any results. Coalition was still on and all of that. And we saw the drama that happened. And uh, now the citizens or residents of the states are asking, uh, talking about what should be done to direct because INEC has said that they don't even know his whereabouts as we speak. Yes, he was summoned to come to Abuja. He didn't show up. He, he was called. He did not respond to any calls. Uh, Einek was asked, okay, so why haven't you declared him wanted? And he has saying that uh, that is left for the police to do. But residents of Adamawa are saying government should fish him out. He should be arrested and prosecuted. Uh, he should be sacked, prosecuted, jailed, and all of it because of what he did. He almost plunged that state into crisis because the election has not been concluded. And he went ahead to declare it's someone fine. which was not in his right I was, to do that. I was, I was even excited to, you know, find out that it was a woman that emerged. emerged you know, when that. the news came out, like it was, it was like a ray of hope mm. for everyone that, wow, this can first, actually happen in Nigeria, a first woman to be declared you know, governor. a governor. governor. From, the it, from the north. Right. You know, from a region where we know that, you know, the men are always at the forefront. Yeah. So it was like a game changer. It gave me hope. Right. I, I, although I did not, um, I did not consider the electoral process that could have, you know, 
allowed her emerge. But it was just because, you know, I was just hopeful. I was, I was proud that, oh, wow, a woman was able to wrestle this. And all of a sudden, we heard that it was not, they had not even concluded, you know, the electoral process before she was announced. So it just, um, apart from shattering a lot of um, hopes, it's like the, like you mentioned the other time, you know, announcing how plunged the state into, this, you know, chaos because her supporters, what if her supporters had gone out? You know, well, they went riot, on the streets, you know, to, to say to exactly, protest, to protest, and to then say that um, she is the rightful, rightful winner, the right, rightful person. Yeah. But then Anek had to come out to say, and even the governor, mm -hmm. the sitting governor, who eventually emerged mm -hmm. as uh, the winner had to come out to speak to douse the tension, tension. because everybody was on the street. His supporters were on the street, her supporters were on the street. And then INEC swung into action immediately, ensured that the election was concluded, collation was concluded, and a winner emerged at the end of the day. So uh, for, for some Nigerians, it, it was a disappointment mm, that she job. went that route because she garnered a lot mm. of support leading mm. up to, to that election, only for them to see that at the end of the day, yeah. um, it wasn't, they, were not, they weren't following the process at the end of the day, and the government will not endorse illegality. Um, so let's quickly move on now. We move to the Tribune, which is the last paper. Uh, the major story says, I'll relocate to the Niger Republic if President Buhari speaking begs for forgiveness with 38 days to go. There's nothing will stop me 29th hand over of power. This story is on all, almost all the papers. This like, a <laughs> <laughs> like a farewell message. Like a farewell message, like bye. Bye. He has always said that he, he yeah. can't wait to, yeah. to leave. Mm -hmm. Right. Black Friday in Imo as gunmen kill five policemen couple. And then 34.8 kilometer or your fashion life road or your government to open newly constructed Ogun River Bridge soon. Adamawa, we don't know suspended Rex uh, whereabouts are next spe speaking. Death by Margo in a kitty court's voids, pastor's marriage to herbalist mistress. I had 22 cows in Kano, but they were all rustled. That was how I became a beggar in a bad dawn. Uh, one year after, Allah Finn's first son tells story of uh, late King's last moments in hospital. Do you have any story on this paper? No, no, no. Tribune. No, no, I don't have any. All right. Uh, it seems we have even spoken about um, some of the stories. The major stories. Yeah, yeah the major stories here. Yeah. Most of the stories here. And so then we can say we are wrapping things up on the front page of uh, the papers this morning. We will go on a short break. When we return, we'll move on to a hot topic. Do stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, right now, we'll be looking at a hot topic, and uh, it has to do with um, uh, Singapore Peace Square. Uh, his statement he made some weeks ago where he said that um, all that matters for men is just uh, respect and not as much as uh, they th women think it's love, that men prefer respect over love. And then we see the reaction from uh, his girlfriend uh, where she began to say that uh, some these are two different things. Men don't need love. All they need is respect. She said these are two different uh, things, bro. If all you need is, uh, is what's the difference between your partner and any random person? Because anyone can respect you. Because anyone can respect you. But the uh, there's uh, respect in love too. Uh, and uh, those men that keep demanding respect up and down, like their lives depend on it, hope you know <laughs> it's end. Stop acting like, okay. No, I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> men demanding mm. respect up and down, like their lives depend on it. Of course, so some men, their life, that's what their life depends on. What do you live for? If a man says oh, respect is what 
I prefer over love. Give it to him. Mm -hmm. If the man says he prefers love over respect, give it to him. Yes, there's respect in love. But then, how do you balance exactly. it? Exactly. How do you manage through? What is even respect? Because I believe respect is relative when we are talking about respect. What you do to this person that shows them that you respect them might be different from what you do to another person yes. that shows them exactly. that you respect mm -hmm. them. But if you look at it, we used to say that, okay, the way to a man's heart is mm -hmm. his stomach. <laughs> Food. But right food. now, it is moving from that to being respected. respectful mm -hmm. or respected. Veronica, do, do, do you think that, you know, sometimes when we say, using the context that you illustrated, the way to a man's heart is his stomach, mm -hmm. some men would, would regard that as respect, whereby right. my wife would provide me food mm -hmm. once I get home. Oh, she's so respectful. Anything else cannot, can decide to fly by, but for the fact that she gives me food, she cooks my meals. She gives me fresh food, right? Every day. Some term that has respect, right? So I think that, just like you mentioned, the context of respect is relative. So you must understand the person you're with. What does this person term as respect, right? Mm. Before you can now begin to say that, okay, I truly respect this person or this person respects me, right? Now, moving on to love. Can you really, really love somebody? without respecting the person. What do you think? Yeah, from what it is, it's like it's possible. Ah. I, no, no, I, feel, okay. I feel, I feel um, love has to do with an emotional connection, mm -hmm. while respect has to do with safety and trust. Hmm. Okay, so if he is looking at it from that angle, I think he is now more concerned with trust and safety, not an emotional connection. Hmm. His reasons best known to him. So if a man says, all I need from you is respect, please let him trust you. He wants to be safe where you are. Mm. Well, well, like, 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 um, no, 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 the girlfriend, yes. yeah, that Peace Corps girlfriend, like she said, you have to earn the respect. You cannot just demand it. Mm. Yeah, you can't just demand and say, you cannot be a very disrespectful person. You don't allow yeah, her, yeah, you don't allow her to share her opinions. You are always lording over her. You don't um, give her room to actually express herself. And then you yeah, want demanding respect. respect. You're demanding respect. You, that, you, you don't get it. Relationship. We don't know. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I just feel... We are not discussing their relationship <laughs> no, we are taking here. You are taking outside of their yeah. relationship. You are taking outside of their relationship okay. what men actually want. If you do a survey here right now, mm -hmm. you would and ask maybe four or five men here and you know, get their opinions. They would actually pick respect. Exactly. They would pick respect over love. Mm -hmm. Because, and like uh, Toby mentioned the other time, there's no how you can actually love someone without respecting, respecting them. You will seek their opinions before you make any decision. You will, you know, consider them before, you know, you do anything where there are so many ways to actually make your partner feel respected. Just like Veronica said, yeah. that, you know, respect is relative. And um, like we've all agreed, if a man says that he wants respect, give it to him. Mm -hmm. Because most men actually feel insecure. So it's that respect that you this yes. dimension that you're yes. yes. So, in, in so of, in it's a men... reflection of insecurity yes. when a man says, no, 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 I, I, I want trust. respect. No, no, it's, 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 it's not really a reflection. It's those that actually demand it by force. You must respect me. You must, I'm the head of this house. You, know, you don't need to bang it. You don't need to <laughs> shout to say that you're the head of this house. We know. No, we are not struggling do. the mm -hmm. crown with you. you are the, but you must actually lead. You must respect me mm. to respect you. You must make me feel loved. You see, the way women want to be loved is the same way a man wants to, wants be, to be respected. respected. You know, and then it's the man, usually, that goes after the woman. Mm. So it is on, the responsibility is on the man to say, okay, this is what I have to offer, love. And then if you're, if you're actually receiving what the man has to off offer, then you are responding with love. So it is the man's responsibility to, first of all, show that, okay, I can love you right, I can protect you, you are safe with me, I respect, I respect you. you. If a woman gets all of that and she, doesn't, and she still doesn't respect the man afterwards, then we need to check her behavior. 
-hmm. because you, you're already secure. You, you know, he says he has assured you. So it is now your own turn to assure him back with your respect. It just makes them, it's just them, you know, garnishes their ego. You know, men have really big egos. Mm. So if you just you go and trample on it and talk to them anyhow, it just makes them feel less of a man. And then you know how... You, you know, know, some people feel that, mm -hmm. okay, because we have gotten to a certain level in our relationship, I can be free with exactly. you, mm -hmm. so I can joke with you, I can play with you, and I can say certain things, not out of disrespect, but because we are at a certain level in our relationship where I feel mm -hmm. that I am free to say these things to you because we have come to that level where we can talk about anything, say anything to each other because we are, in quote, playing, mm -hmm. as, as some people put it. And so you will not be serious. You might just want to say some things. Mm -hmm. And then the man is feeling disrespected. Yes. Well, it actually boils down to communication uh -huh. in the relationship. So you must have known or you must have discussed, or if you've dated the person for a while, you would know what triggers them. Oh, if I call my boyfriend Ode, he doesn't like it. <laughs> Meanwhile, there are some people True. that call this a Ode. Big and the other person responds. Yeah. 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 The other yeah. person responds. Exactly. Yeah. So what is acceptable in relationship A is not acceptable mm. in relationship B. So if you have a clear communication to know, okay, this is what actually makes me feel respected. As a woman, you should also place it on the table. Like, this is what you should do. Or in, in this case, this is how you should respond to me, or uh, you cannot just disappear without communicating. You, you have to always talk about what you want, because if you do not talk, the other person will not know. They don't, have, they don't move around with an x-ray machine to know what you have in your head or in your mind. You always have to say, this is how I want to be you mm. know, treated, and if you do not tell people how to treat you, they will not treat you right. Mm -hmm. So it yeah. all boils down to communication. You know, there are some me. ladies, when time begin to give them all that attention, all the care, they begin to have this entitlement mindset and they begin to feel I can do anything and get away with it. Really? Yes. I have a couple of friends like that. She's saying no. I, I have a couple of them. Mm. They begin to be like, yes, I am entitled to this. So I think this is what is it when it's an entitlement think, mentality? Yes, the context is break it down. Mm. The context is different. I know we're talking about um, a boyfriend and girlfriend relationship mm -hmm. in this context, but you see, no, we are taking it beyond boyfriend beyond and exactly. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like yeah. when you're married, mm. if I, if my husband says to me that it's only respect he wants, um, I will give you the respect. But there are other things that show that you actually love this person mm -hmm. beyond the respect that you know you would naturally give yeah. based on the fact that you know how this you communicate, mm -hmm. how you communicate yeah. exactly the 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 extra care you give. To, towards your spouse, right? So for example, I'm thinking of my head, um, if I want to show that I love this person, I probably would reach out to him and say, how is your day going? That's not, I'm not respecting you by reaching out to you to say that, how is your day going? It just means that I care about you. Mm -hmm. So beyond the fact that, okay, I respect you, I provide, I give you your meals, I honor you, I speak gently to you, you know, those things are, it has to move beyond respect at some point in the relationship right. to evolving into love. And we also established earlier that you cannot um, love, you cannot respect somebody without loving, loving them, especially loving them. someone you're in a relationship with. Mm -hmm. So thinking about it, you can respect your boss in the office, mm -hmm. but you, you don't have to love him. Mm -hmm. You don't even, you cannot even love him, <laughs> except some things. <laughs> you get what I mean? You can respect, mm -hmm. yeah. so you mm -hmm. see, it has to evolve beyond um, just respect to love. And I think that even the best of men want to be loved. Mm. Because at the end of the day, we realize that men sometimes want to be babied, mm. right? They want, mm -hmm. to, they want you to know that they care or that you care about them. And I think that that's very, very important. And then when you begin to love, you naturally know this person's likes, his dislikes, and then respect can flow from that. I think some men mm. see um, uh, respect as loving them. Yes. Yes, and that then is traditional, what, yes. yes. They see yes. respect as you loving them. They do not know the difference, the difference between, the between both. So it is when you are showing them respect, oh, this person loves me because of the respect mm -hmm. that I am getting from them. And also bear in mind that there are some men who, 
whose um, definition of respect is to trample upon you. Exactly. Yes. Trample upon yes. you. A you woman that like cannot a, talk. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Don't you know, talk when I'm talking. Just because I'm, I'm an African, I'm the head of the house. See, once you have to emphasize that I'm the head of the house, yeah. you are really not head of the house. <laughs> you have already, you know, outsourced that role because you do not need to always emphasize it. If you've earned it, it will come to mm -hmm. you naturally. So some men think that, oh, um, to get a woman's respect, she has to, you know, I have to trample upon her, make her feel some, put fear in her. And that is not act how to actually earn a woman's respect. Mm -hmm. Just like you, I mentioned earlier, you have to make her feel sane, you have to love her, you have to protect her, provide, you know, there's so many things that you need to do to actually earn their respect. So you we'll know, get so to know which one you prefer <laughs> <laughs> when we return from this commercial break. Please stay okay. with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thank you for staying with us. We've been looking at the matter of uh, love or respect. Which do you prefer? Join the conversation and call us on 081-270-53687 or 091-390-76948. Or you can tweet to us at TVC Connect using the hashtag YourViewOnTVC. Join the conversation and call us. Uh, to be a part of uh, the conversation. Now, I was saying behind the scene before we, we return on the break that um, sometimes when your partner decides to tell you, okay, this is how I want to be respected, mm. this is what you do and everything, so the, the relationship now becomes mechanical, mm -hmm. so to speak, like I'm a robot because this person says, this is how I want to be respected, and I'm acting this way, I'm acting that way. I am not being myself mm. in the relationship. It becomes a burden. The person is not going with the flow. Mm. How do we begin to balance that? If, okay, you talk about it, and in the process, the whole respecting is, in fact, it just gets <laughs> lost. Because the, the lady might be, or the guy could be like, okay, she's not herself anymore, mm. and the lady is being... I don't even know what to do. I'm even tired not, at the end of the day. To step on toes here. Right. Well, if Just you're toes. in a relationship <laughs> and your <laughs> husband <laughs> or boyfriend, if you're in a relationship and your husband or boyfriend, you know, tells you or gives you some conditions that you cannot bear, it's not a do or die affair. Well, maybe for relationships before After you I'm go. <laughs> Well, it would be, it would After spending, like the next time I review, you would be so many years, years. You spent your it would time, be at you spent the your energy, you spent your It would be at resources. the beginning of the... That was why I said, maybe for relationships, not marriages. Yeah. Because for relationships, before you even get deep or deeper into it, you have would... Have conversations. Yeah, you would have had conversations. And if you feel that this person's... Uh, what they define as respect does not fit it's what yours. or your morals or values you feel, or, you feel caged you're not expressing yourself properly you just Please, you know you opt out. move you it's not a do or die affair you're not going to you know just ignore the red flag because those are red flags yes. if you uh, if you cannot be yourself if you cannot express yourself freely so what are you doing in such a relationship you know you should not just uh, commit yourself just because you want to get married and then now you know through all questions, because it's a partnership. You are in a partnership with this person, all and right. it's not just the it's not just the guy. What about your own feelings, exactly. your right. happiness? And if you're that. not happy, right, we the guy cannot the be line. happy. Let's quickly okay. get Kola calling from Abuja. Kola, good morning. You can go ahead with your contribution. Good morning. My name is Kola. I'm calling from Abuja. You're welcome. Good morning, everybody in the studio. Good morning, morning Kola. First time, Kola. Oh. Yay. Yay. I, I, Welcome. I just, want to con I just want to contribute in the studio this morning. Okay. Talking about love and respect. Yes. I, to me, I prefer respect too, because mm -hmm. when a woman respects me, I can do anything for that woman. Can um, imagine? You to more for me, because my my wife knows me that I used to do everything for her. I clean the house for her, wash the plate for her, even 
go as far as giving her my ATM card just for the marriage to stay. Oh, how oh. 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 sweet! I'm also advising other men also to do the same thing because women, they are the kind of people they are, they are too emotional. Mm. So you must all, always fit in that their emotions so that you get the best out from them. Thank mm. you. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Kola. You see. I told you, if you, you would do anything, <laughs> if you take a survey of four, five, ten men, most of them would, would pick respect over love. And we should but all... I think it's more like massaging their ego. Yes, it, yeah. it acknowledges his leadership. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, the, in the home or in the relationship that, yes, he is the man here. Mm. But sometimes, I don't know, it, you don't need someone to actually let you know that you are the man here. That's how I feel. You will feel that it. You, you should, you from the up. actions of <laughs> yes. the person, mm -hmm. from the actions mm -hmm. of the person, the person will show you that, yes, you are the man here, but you demanding it. Mm. Now, uh, that's, that's where problem. I'm not, um, you know, comfortable with. You demanding that you must mm -hmm. respect me. You must when you tell me, given, you must show you me. Given. Yes, we can mm -hmm. have conversations, mm -hmm. but we have to strike a balance. For the emotions of the other person mm -hmm. like we mentioned earlier that it could not become mechanical where you are demanding okay this is how and then it also go, go, goes to mm -hmm. show uh, how you communicate with yourself mm -hmm. if you are not communicating in a, in that in a setting where, where both of you can strike a balance then there's a problem absolutely but where you cannot or where you can, it means that you guys are understanding yourselves mm. and are ready to make that sacrifice for one another. I hear we have another caller on the line. All right, Ayodeji from Suleri. Good morning. Ayod, are you there? Yes, you there? Hello? Good morning. Go ahead with your contribution. Good okay. Good. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Ayodeji from Aguda Suleri. Yes, I hear. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we yes. can. I think there's a delayed feedback or something. Aya DJ, are you still there? All right, uh, do call us again. If uh, perhaps the line would be better if you can call us uh, again. Um, my husband and I, we talk about this matter of respect. It's when we just got married. Respect, this one, mm -hmm. that one. Um, but then we had a conversation. Mm -hmm. And it was important we have, we have that conversation or we had that conversation. Mm -hmm. Because oftentimes people don't have these difficult conversations uh, because um, perhaps they do, there's no friendship in the relationship mm -hmm. because where there is friendship in yes. the relationship it becomes easy, easy. to have certain mm -hmm. conversations Absolutely. but where there's no friendship mm -hmm. then it is difficult but because we had the friendship in the relationship we were able to speak to this matter yeah. of respect respect i i like it when you do this i like it so it is also about how you put it across to your partner. That's exactly. That's we should yeah. even talk about. Mm -hmm. We should even talk about to communicate. Yeah, we should even talk about some women. Some some women are actually rude. You know, <laughs> they, so, some we'll come women. to that. Okay. We'll, Ayodeji is back online. Okay. Ayodeji, go ahead with your contribution. Good morning. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Right. Go ahead. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. The top, the the topic. This morning is a very, very interesting one, and I would have loved to talk about it. And as I thought, see, on this matter, if you if you invite a million men to come and talk about it, every man will choose respect mm. over love, and that is my own candid stand to this morning. Mm. Before before I start, I would like to paint a two picture scenario okay. in this case. One is my ex. My ex. We broke up simply because not because she did not love me, but because the respect was not there. Uh uh. 
you you see i don't know when 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 a lady i think the viola i'm sorry i most of you your faces are so new so i couldn't call you by your name so i'm sorry about that but mm -hmm. i think that other lady viola has even helped me in the second point that time because when when you were discussing about um enemy respect I want to ask you a question. Right. Go ahead. Is it? Am, am I All right. He's off it? the line. Oh, okay, I, okay, he's, okay. he's off the line. But um, I would have loved to know what he terms as respect. respect. Mm -hmm. It would be interesting to know if you know that uh, this lady loves you and you had to break up because she did not show you respect. Mm -hmm. Did you have that conversation, conversation. with her? What was her response when you told her? It would be interesting. Exactly, to Veronica, yeah. because I do think that respect is relative. Yeah, you absolutely. See, based on upbringing, nature, nurture, um, that would give proper context to what we term as respect. So if a guy grew up, for example, in the East, di very different from a guy who would probably grow up in the South, right? Um, being a Yoruba person. And the term respect to mean different things. So at the end of the day, it's um, a conversation of knowing your partner, knowing what this person, like you said, Veronica, having communications, having conversations at the end of the day to say, what do you want me to do? What do you expect me to do as regards communication or as regards respect, right? And I think that um, to your spouse, I wish Ayodeji was still going to come back online, you mm -hmm. know, to give proper context to it. So at the end of the day, really yeah. knowing the person mm -hmm. you're in a relationship with would help you drive the conversation of right. respect. Better. I also wanted mm -hmm. to discuss, um, you know, the, you know, the era, yeah, the era of women emancipation, feminism. Yes. You know, a lot of Are women. Sure? Yeah. Yes. No, 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 Because there's, 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 there's some women, there's some women that do not fully understand the concept of feminism. Mm -hmm. So they just think that, oh, I, I, I have a right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. You know, they don't understand. Like, you don't have to be rude, you know, to show that you are a feminist or talk to people when you're or stand or be so confrontational every time. You know, the concept of um, feminism even goes beyond All of just, them. yeah, yes. you know, beyond just struggling um, position or authority with a man. Oh, we are equal. Oh, this is that we have equal rights here and there. And then it um, makes them feel, you know, a lot of women feel that they have to, you know, be confrontational. Confront confront confrontation now. <laughs> English, yes, you know, to, I understand. So we need, we need to suppress all of that. No, we'll, we'll talk more on that. We need to quickly go on a commercial yeah. break. When we return, we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. All right, thank you for staying with us. We're still talking about uh, the matter of uh, love or respect. And you can join the conversation and call us on 081-270-53687 or 091-390-769-48. Or you can tweet to us at TVC Connect using the hashtag YourViewOnTVC. Now, Toby, I want to come to you. Okay. It's this matter. Mm -hmm. How do you show your husband, you respect him. Now, this is giving us a practical <laughs> example. Ah, respect. Okay, so, um, I, as mentioned earlier, I said um, the context or the concept of respect is relative. Know your partner. So, yes. for my partner, for my husband, I know that he doesn't like me. Okay, so I, I joke a lot. <laughs> I clown a lot, right? But when we're outside, he wants me to, you know, um, to not make him the subject of conversation. Mm. Do you see? Yeah. So that's, I mean, for some other person, let's talk, let's talk, let's cut, I don't mind, right? So my husband does not want me to have him as the subject of conversation, and I think that I, I would respect him by not doing that, right? Right. We have a caller on the line, Kelechi okay. from Shasha. Kelechi, good morning. Go ahead with your contribution. Hello, Veronica. 
Monica and Co. Good morning. Right. Good morning. morning. Hello, can you hear me? We yes, can hear we can. you. Veronica, you look pretty here. We can hear you. Hello, can you hear me? We can hear you, Kelechi. Go ahead. Okay. Good morning, everybody. Good, Good morning. morning. Uh, please, I want to ask a question, two questions. I want to really ask two questions. The lady uh, at the center with glasses, while she, while she was talking, separated relationship from marriage. Okay? I, I didn't, it didn't go down well with me. That's number one. Number two, Veronica, while you were talking also, you talked about you kind of separated friendship from relationship. I now, exonerated ask, what? I said you separated, you kind of separated friendship from relationship. That's the way you we are talking about. Said, you know, you from your from your opinion, from your discussion, you were, you separate, you seem to have separated friendship from relationship. Okay. From what I heard from you, from what I gather from you. Now I want to ask this naive question. Let me say it's a naive question. What is the difference between relationship, marriage, and friendship? Mm. That's number one question. Number two question is this: A lady I want to marry respects me and uh, loves me. Right. My problem is, my worry is that she respects and loves her pastor more mm. than me. In fact, the way she greets her pastor, she doesn't greet mm. me the same way. So, is it Have you had that conversation with her? Yes. Yeah. Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Veronica. Yes. I asked, have you had that conversation with her that you do she not like or she's not doing something about, right? She doesn't even want to talk about it. It's a philosophy in their church. In most Pentecostal churches, it's their philosophy. That is a philosophy. That's a, operating, uh, a personal operating philosophy of, of, every, of every Christian priest, especially in Pentecostal church. You will see your husband, you will see your, in front of yourself, your wife will, your wife will kneel down before the pastor as she sees the pastor coming. And, this, and she will never greet you the same way. And in the evil, in evil culture, that is what evil stipulates that the wife should greet the man like that. So it, it, it's my, so it puts a question, a very big question mark. I have tried to... Right. Kelechi, obviously that is peculiar to her church. Mm. Uh, we cannot just generalize the churches mm. as it stands because every church has their rules, mm. uh, their later rules and regulations. Now, I spoke about friendship earlier mm -hmm. in a relationship. Yeah. There are differences. In marriage, some persons are not friends where you can freely, you guys yeah, have speak, freely express yourself awesome. to one another. You guys can talk about everything. Mm -hmm. You just saw this person. You like this person, yes, but then they, you guys haven't gotten to that level where you can call yourself friends. Mm. Friends, there is a bond beyond what brought you together. The contract, mm -hmm. marriage is a contract that brought you both together. You guys were friends. You could talk, express discuss yourselves, anything. discuss anything mm -hmm. before you got married and maybe decided to have a contract with one another to say, let's come together as one and move this friendship a step further. Mm. That is what it is. And then you are ready to commit. There is commitment in marriage. You are ready to commit, submit, and be responsible. Right. Very important. Mm -hmm. Keyword. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In exactly. marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you have to in friendship, I do not owe you anything. anything like I, it is left to me to mm -hmm. say, okay, I owe you this. I want to be your friend to a certain level. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to marriage, there are no limits. Boundaries. Which was the point I made when I said, okay, in relationships, you cannot, you know, he was saying that I compared a relationship, you know, to a marriage. I think when I said, if something is, if you feel caged, you mm -hmm. leave. But I was actually referring to the relationship stage. Not the if, marriage. Not, not the, the marriage. marriage stage, yes. Because if you do not have that friendship at that level, then there's no need to commit yourself into a lifelong contract mm -hmm. that will make you feel you know, unhappy and, you know, can make you, can send you into depression. Because if your partner is not loving you right, it can send you, you know, into a state of mind that would not make you productive. Mm -hmm. So that was what I... And then you don't yeah. get the best out of the relationship exactly. at the end of the day. Yes. Exactly. And also, women, women should also learn to respect their men. Like I was going to, I was making the points before we went on break the other time about, you know, feminism. You know, a lot of women have actually taken the concept of feminism to think that oh, we are 
you know, in a um, competition. In a competition, it's not a competition. It's it's a protection of everybody's rights. We all have equal rights, you know, to you know earn as much. If I'm doing as much as you were doing as a man, I should be able to get paid, like mm -hmm. you know, get an equal pay. You know, the, the concept of um, feminism is quite basic: yes. equal rights for everyone. But don't make it seem as though oh, it's about um, even if you're doing 50-50 with your man in marriage, you should not disrespect him because of that. I don't uh, subscribe to 50-50 uh, payment in marriage. <laughs> just it's put, not my she thing. She just had to put that exactly. out there. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying, but I'm saying even if, even if that is what your uh, marriage mm. looks like, you should not disres disrespect him because of that, because you think, oh, after mm. all, I'm bringing the same right, because thing we have limited and all of time. that. Let's let me, let me yes. quickly address something that he said when he said that his wife respects the pastor more than him. Is it his wife or someone he wants to get married to? Was well, that his, his I think he, he said um, his girlfriend or yeah. something. Yeah. Yeah. He wants to get married Whatever, to Whatever, yeah. whoever now, it is. I'm, I'm actually thinking that is what is happening in most homes these days. Mm. Because you will see a situation whereby a woman now doesn't give the husband that so much respect mm. or accords the husband so much respect. Mm -hmm. But when she gets to church, you will see all, all the respect. And even the husband will be wondering, <laughs> where, where is this Where is She's this probably not seen that leadership skills in her husband. I think that, you know... Um, mm -hmm. Is it about leadership skills now? Or yes. is it about spiri spirituality Viva. now? I don't think it has anything What's to do with, with spirituality. Whether, whether spiritually the or physically, mm -hmm. that leadership, yeah. mm -hmm. if he is not showing it, the woman may not want to submit to him. Perhaps she did not well, know or she did not see that mm -hmm. before they got married. And so now she's seen it somewhere well, else. I think I, I have a contrary opinion. Right. right. So I feel like when you're in a relationship with somebody or married to somebody, there's, I call it the law of see finish. Right. So the tendency to see <laughs> everything good, bad, you know, mm -hmm. about this person is there. Mm -hmm. So your pastor, you're not seeing him in singlet and boxers. <laughs> you're not seeing him. When mm -hmm. he's really dressed down, down. when he's mm -hmm. free watching TV, mm -hmm. but when he's himself in his yeah, element, in his mm -hmm. element, yeah. So I, I've heard of some pastors that will say that they're not as bold even when they go off the stage Who when beats? they minister. Yes, they're very shy and reserved. And then you, a congregation member, you're looking at the bold, the person you know mm. dishing out word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and this is not the person that is at home. So the tendency to get attracted or to respect somebody like that mm, okay. is uh, you don't see this person in his weak state. Mm. But your mm. husband is there. You see this person in, at the stage. lowest. He, he wakes up, his hair is rough, <laughs> everything. You are seeing him. Oh, right? he's at so night. we must begin to have conversations mm. to say that the fact that you see your husband in, in, your, in his weak state mm -hmm. his doesn't, do you get, doesn't, doesn't water make down you. Water down his authority. Yes, water down his In fact. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean. Mm -hmm. You must always consciously remember that this man is the head of the... And then I must also put out there that yeah. a man and a woman may be equal, mm -hmm. but the husband and wife is not equal. Mm. Mm. Do you see? True. A regular True. man and woman, mm -hmm. fine. Husband, wife, no, you are not. The man is the head yes. Yes. of the home. Yeah. An and that there is no perfect person. Yes. We must understand that. Mm. Oftentimes it is because we have high expectations and of mm -hmm. each other. What are that and then, that God <laughs> <laughs> and, so, <laughs> and so it now begins to mm. be like, okay, this, I'm seeing what I, I oh. ordered is different <laughs> from what I got at the end of the day. But we must oh. understand that um, the content of what we want to say is mm. important in our relating mm. with one another, whether with your husband, with anyone outside, awesome. everybody That's wants true. respect. Mm -hmm. Whether As long as you're a human, mm -hmm. you want respect. Mm -hmm. The context, the way you say it, and the time you, you are say saying it. it, the manner you're saying it. And if you have children, you must show your children that you respect your husband. Yes, absolutely. It is key. Mm. Because it is key. Yeah, actually, they respect. Respect. They, they just it do is things key. anyhow. Because you are passing that value to your, your child. Yeah, because if you talk down your husband in front of your kids, they will not respect him. Mm -hmm. They will not respect him. And, and so even you, what to be by the time you're trying married. to correct them, they're, they're looking like, but, but you're doing that. You're doing that. You know what you were doing yesterday. Right. 
So it's important so you that... you daddy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you want to do with that, you can take it to the yeah, room to the where room. the children yeah. are not there, then you have conversations, mm. tough conversations with one another, but then we'll leave the conversation here. The, I, I believe that we've been able to let people know it mm. is important that the content of what you are saying, how you say it across is important. Uh, we take a break. When we return, we'll continue our discussion in the studio. Stay with us. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. All right, thanks for staying with us. Now to football lovers. Uh, we know that uh, this time, that's around 10 a.m., is usually the time for the beautiful game. But not to worry, the timing has been moved to 11 a.m. immediately after this program, Your View. So just uh, exercise some patience. When this show is over, you will have your program, The Beautiful Game, come up. Now joining us in, in the studio is the immediate past Vice Chancellor of Founding University and the consultant Islamic Cultural Educational Scientific Organization, also the Chief Imam of Lagos State University, Professor Amidu Sani. He will be talking to us about uh, the just concluded fast Eid and everything Eid Mubarak. Thank you very I much. <laughs> very right. Now before we went on the break, we were talking about love and respect mm. in marriage, in relationship. What is the position of uh, Islam on that? Well, thank you very much. Uh, well, I think you ladies have been doing a very wonderful job. Thank, thank you, sir. Thank you. And we are all your fans. <laughs> <laughs> so but when you have your first caller on your program, mm. you make a shout out. <laughs> you welcome them. When you have the first person appearing in your program, I don't know what we'll do, maybe a ram. Oh. Ah, well, okay. <laughs> yeah, L love and respect in relationship, and of course, even in the spirit of Ramadan itself, yes, uh, it's about love. It's about respect for even human behaviors and human feelings. Yes. But in relationship, I just want to refer to a, a, a very uh, comprehensive, let me put that way, verse of the Quran, which is uh, Quran chapter twenty, verse twenty-one, and I think those at home can actually look at that. And I'll just give you a translation that among the signs of the Almighty is that he has created for you, amongst yourself, partners, so you can have recourse and tranquility with them, mm. and has created between you love and affection. In this, there are in these signs for those who can think. So that encapsulates the entire concept of marriage, the entire concept of relationship, and of course, what you are supposed to gain when you engage in that kind of thing. And again, there's also the tradition of the prophets that says that whoever gets married, married, if a man gets married, if a man gets married, such a person has actually completed 50% of his religion or her religion. Mm. So, and you should now, whatever remains thereafter is only 50%. So, in, in an exile, if you already have 50%, you can be sure you, already, you have already passed. Mm -hmm. So, and that is the basic thing. So, it is supposed to be an institution for demonstration of love, for, of respect, of affection, mm. and, of, and of course, uh, giving rights and also procreating mm. so that you can have a bigger society that can contain the tradition. So, that's the, I mean, the, message, the basic uh, information and philosophy about marriage in, uh, in Islam. Right. Can I have a question? Yeah. Yes. So what does Islam say about respecting women? Yes, it may interest you that if you go from Quran chapter 1 to 14, you will have a whole chapter dedicated to women only. The fourth chapter of Quran is called the chapter of women. And that's the only place we have there that we have women, a whole chapter in the Holy Book dedicated to them only. And there's none dedicated only to men. <laughs> so, just to let you know how 
uh, Islam has been very, very particular about women or the female child. Then again, the common tradition of saying that if you educate a man, you educate a single person. Mm. If you educate a woman, you educate a nation. Yeah. It's actually borrowed from the Quran. Really? Mm. So it, it has become a popular saying. Mm. People are never bothered to know where does it come from. Mm. And again, you see, when it comes to a matter of inheritance, the Quran has also given full right to a woman, either to inherit from her husband or from her father. So a woman has two sources of uh, inheritance. inheritance, from the husband and from the parent. But we, we don't really it. see that. It seems that is not what we see in our society. Well, that's a look. I mean, that's a cultural thing in this part of the world. Mm. But where Islamic rules have been uh, observed and uh, sort of, mm. or sort of uh, applied, it's a rule. Mm. It's part of their own constitution. And of course, even if some Muslim homes here who believe that their, uh, their, their property or their, whatever they leave behind should be administered in the Islamic way, that has been the practice. Mm. So very good respect for women and, of course, and uh, they have a special position uh, in Islam. And the prophet of Islam himself, and the best testimony that you can have is what the women say, the wives of the prophet said about their husband, mm -hmm. that he never lifted his hand against any of them, never. And never used abusive word against any of them. So if you see anybody doing to the, anything to the contrary, such a person is not practicing the religion of Islam as brought by the, by the prophet. So that's just it. Toby. When we say um, such a person is not practicing, so uh, my question is, are there rules, are there places that we can take such person to, to say, this, <laughs> this man is not doing, or this person is not doing what, you know, Islam preaches? Well, there are two ways to it. We are in a society which is a plural society, Muslim, Christian, non-religion, whatever. And uh, the operating constitution in Nigeria is not about religion. Yes. So you cannot take anybody to an Islamic law court if the law is being violated or not being respected. But again, even the Nigerian constitution itself, the law guarantees the right of women so that you can take to the secular court that if a woman is uh, being abused or has the right been uh, denied, whatever. But that has to be addressed by the, by the local uh, uh, common law court, so to say. So it's guaranteed. Let's take it to the lessons of Ramadan. Mm. You know, it has to do with, you know, the fear of God and, you know, unity. How, how do you advise? Because I believe there are there's some men that actually abuse their wives but would we'll still go into the fasting you know, period like a holy person. Oh, this is the uh, this is time for me to get cleansed and you know, you know get forgiven for my sins. And then after the fasting period, they come back again that. to do that. So, do you think they are really taking the lessons of Ramadan and applying it to their daily lives? Well, I don't want to feel threatened by the presence of women surrounding me. <laughs> <laughs> you have all been talking about uh, men abusing women. Okay, let's balance women. it. Yes. yes. Agreed now. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, whether there is Ramadan or not, as I said, a woman is not supposed to be abused at all. Mm -hmm. So if a man is not treating the wife very well, mm. such a person is not practicing the religion as he's supposed to be practiced. And of course, we have religious leaders, we have imams to whom such things can be reported, who will first of all start by counseling. You see, counseling does a lot of uh, uh, repairs rather than harsh situation of sanction. So that kind of thing can be taken. And again, you have to think, the woman you are talking about, is it the legally married person? Because if a woman is not legally married to you and you went to Ramadan with her, you have just wasted your time, mm -hmm. of course. If you have, a, you have what you call the partner, I mean, there's nothing like partner in Islam. Mm. You're either married or you're not married. Mm. Mm. So if you are legally married to a woman, uh, you should be nice to her all through Ramadan or no Ramadan. It's a lifelong contract. Okay. But now let's talk about uh, Ramadan itself. Uh, it has come and gone, and gone yeah. but the lessons are here with us. Let's look at the lessons, the importance of these lessons, especially... Yes, it is over, but we need these lessons to still be with us as we even look at uh, transitioning to a new government. Yeah, that's a good uh, thing. You see, Ramadan itself uh, is one out of the 12 months of the year, and it's supposed to be a training ground. And if you are able to do something one, two, three, four, for a whole month, 
is expected to uh, live with you for the next 11 months again. Mm -hmm. Now, the basic thing about Ramadan, you see, Ramadan fasting is not limited to Muslim, uh, fasting is not limited to Muslim only. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. It has been there, and if you go to Quran chapter 2, verse 184, it said there that, look, fasting has been prescribed to you Muslims as it was prescribed to those before you. Mm -hmm. And there is a concluding uh, se uh, statement at the end of that verse, perchance you may be God conscious. Mm -hmm. So the object of fasting in the Islamic tradition is for God consciousness. Mm -hmm. And the thing is this, you have the opportunity to lock up your room, eat, drink, do whatever you like, and nobody will see you. But you say, no, no, I won't do that. You have the right to have legitimate affair with your, part, with your wife or husband during the day, and you refuse to do it. No policeman to arrest, to, to arrest you or to charge you to court. Why did you do that? Because you are sure that God is with you there. Mm. Even if you were to do it, he knows about it. Yeah. Mm. So that prepares that, okay, if you are denied the opportunity of taking something that is legal and legitimate to you, so that is supposed to prepare for to, to take you away from things that are not even legal mm. to you. So that's the first thing. Discipline, God yeah. consciousness. Yeah. The feeling that God is present in all that you do. And again, if you go to the history of fasting itself, people... Uh, that were known or introduced to before the coming of Islam. Either you want to ward off an evil, mm. you take to fasting. Mm. Remember the story of uh, Goliath and uh, David? David. Yes. David had to fast with his followers for some days so that they could confront Goliath, and so they Absolutely. were able to, to, deny, to defeat him. Mm. The same thing with Moses, even Jesus in the Bible. Yeah. Moses had to fast for 30 days and then 10 days before he was given the, the tablet, the, 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 the law. So fasting has always been an instrument of attracting divine favors or warding off divine evils or any evil. Mm. But it has come to be an institution in Islam year in year, regardless of your condition. Mm -hmm. But of course, if you are sick or you are on a journey or whatever, or any other condition, but it's a compulsory thing that has formed part of the pillars of Islam that you do in all the year. So one, there is this spiritual uh, advantage that you drive it. And that is the feeling of God presence everywhere, every time, any, anyhow. Mm -hmm. Then again, there's also the health advantage. Many people don't know that. In fact, I want to uh, draw your attention to a, a website that gives you all the health advantages of fasting from the medical point of view. Mm. And uh, if you go to healthline.com, you can check it, check it there. You will see the various, and I can just mention some of them to you, that one. Uh, it supports the blood sugar level. It allows you also uh, to have the brain function more properly. Again, it helps the digestive system. In that some people are so used to it, taking maybe four, apart from the regular three meals a day, <laughs> snacks, yeah. Uh, yeah. but you allow your system to rest, rest. for a while. Yes. Mm. <laughs> At least, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you allow you allow your system to rest for a while. I mean, it becomes so habituated to so to, to it's going to recoup after a while, mm. get stronger, and again, many of the it also prevents a lot of diseases. In that, many of the uh, bad or microscopic things that also feed on our blood on our mm. system, when they are also starved, mm. they will die naturally. Right, mm. interesting. And they will get out of the system, mm. so it makes you healthier. So mm. when they have nothing to feed on, they die. I do um, intermittent fasting, and mm. I know the benefits you know, that of I it. gain yes. from it. Yes. So I totally agree with you. Yeah, it's also one of the ways to fasten weight loss. I know women... <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's one of the ways yeah. to do intermittent fasting. You know, Beauty must be maintained. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I, I, it doesn't have any side effect, yeah. no. as, as, mm -hmm. as we confirmed. Yeah, mm. Again, there's also the issue of uh, supporting your, the growth and your metabolism. There's mm -hmm. what, what the scientists call the HGH, that is human growth hormone. Mm. Okay. So fasting also assists you in promoting this one. And in fact, I mean, just go to that way, I don't want to waste the okay. So just go to that, you see yes. several advantages okay. of fasting mm. that uh, has been confirmed, even by normals, by the scientists themselves. Mm. Blood level, blood sugar, reducing blood sugar, a lot of things around that. That's quite, quite interesting to, to, to know that, right. apart from that said health advantage. Right. Then one thing that we should not miss out is this. You know, it's in the scriptures that Moses talked with God directly. I mm. mean, uh, God was, he was talking to him on Mount Sinai, yes. and uh, he was also hearing God. Yes. yes. 
And in the tradition of Israel, it was reported that Moses was told that, okay, at the end of time, there, that there will be a community who will be able to move closer to God than Moses. And Moses was surprised. So how would that be? So, well, Moses, when I was talking to her, you were hearing me, there were 70,000 veils between you and myself. Wow. You can see. I'm not in that part. If, yeah, if you want to establish that, the sun, where the sun is, you know where the sun is, several thousand miles away from yeah. us here. Yeah. And we still feel it here to do whatever I want to do. And that's where, when the time comes, there will be a community that will be closer to me in terms of conversation, conversation than you. And that veil, all those 70,000 veils will be removed. You're taken away. Taken away. Mm. And Moses was surprised. So who would that be? To say, it will be a community of a prophet that will come after you. When they fast, all the veils will be removed. So they can talk to me one to one. Directly. Directly. Mm. So that is one spiritual advantage that Muslims okay. have been given that, okay, when you fast, before you break your fasting, offer any prayer you want, request anything you want, and you can be sure it is going to be direct yeah. access. Mm. No failure of network. <laughs> <laughs> so I do, I do like the perspective of saying that, you know, there are more benefits to fasting, to this Ramadan period, than just, you know, spiritual, uh, the spiritual angle, which means that irrespective of the WhatsApp group you're in, <laughs> you would always find something to fast about. So um, losing weight, you know, and if it's growth, or more now, anything you want, you'd always find it, right? And I also found out, sir, that um, this Ramadan period is a period to empath empathize with the less fortunate, um, such that you're able to put yourself in their shoes, saying that, okay, so the people that cannot eat or do not have the ability to feed properly, um, I can actually now begin to sense what they feel, right? Um, is, is it possible to expatiate on that a bit? Yeah, l let me tell you something. See, Ramadan is a leveler mm. for everybody, whether you are rich, mm. whether you are poor, whether, wherever you are. So it gives you a platform to be able to experience what others are also going through. Mm. So if somebody doesn't have the means to eat or to clothe himself, I has now gone through that process. You now, you now know what it feels, what it means to go through that experience of hunger or denial or whatever. But again, more importantly, let me also tell you something. You know, fasting in Islam is not just about uh, abstaining from food and drinking or sexual something alone. Yes. Now, if you go into Quran chapter 19, yeah, chapter 19, yeah, verse 21, it says that you can, if you can abandon eating, drinking, or sexual intercourse, but if you fail to abstain from using your tongue <laughs> or your limbs from bad behaviors mm. or bad speeches, your fasting is gone. Mm. Mm. Wow. Yes, you, you, no, your fasting is a, is a goner, as now. <laughs> <laughs> is, is that why you find out that when most Muslims fast, they try to, you know, withdraw no. exactly. from society? Because mm -hmm. giving, off, giving off eating, drinking, and sexual alone, Without it's a li lot. Oh, it's a lot. But if you are able to do that, and you refuse to uh, engage, or you still engage in loose talk or foul talk or bad behaviors, you have lost the benefit of that fasting. Mm. Okay, let me actually and that is to, the, that's, that's the, the to what she just said. Now, yeah. you said when Muslims are fasting, they tend to withdraw. So um, yesterday, I was on my way to church. So they were celebrating... Ramadan. Okay, the end of Ramadan. The end of Ramadan. Yeah. It was barely the end of Ramadan, and you could see two Muslim men fighting, uh -uh. separating them from the road. And the driver of the bus was saying, hmm, now wow, all these Muslim people, it's like they were all in a cage waiting for the time to Don't break look. loose. Mm -hmm. So how do we balance um, discipline and um, actually impacting the teachings or the lessons of Ramadan in one's life? Nah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's a very simple thing. Uh, that's a very good question. Well, laws are made to be obeyed. Mm. So whether there's Ramadan or not, in fact, there is even the, an express injunction in Islam that even if somebody provokes you during Ramadan mm. and wants to take you out on a fight, you see, yeah, my brother, my sister, I'm fasting. Even if they slap you, you the other no, cheek. don't even don't get to that level first. <laughs> <laughs> If somebody provokes you to the point of mm -hmm. calling you out for a fight, you say, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am fasting. fasting. Why do you have to proclaim that? So what if the person now says, 
fasting after the you are bath. fasting. No, no. You know, and the person just keeps. You want to fight. Yes, yes. by force. You send him to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the thing is this. While you are telling somebody that you are fasting, is to mm. draw his attention that mm. you are undergoing a spiritual rebirth, mm. okay. which disallows you from engaging in bestial or animalistic behavior. Mm. Because you know, animals that fight, I mean, mm -hmm. for whatever reason. So if the, the person is reasonable, that's okay, let me allow him just to go. But you see, somebody has gone through a process of training, of discipline, mm. for over 30 days or 29 days, as the case may be. And no sooner he's gone out of that thing, he's reverted to his own, the, the old ways. It's just like, uh, I mean, human beings are of various natures. Mm -hmm. You could have a criminal who has just been released from prison for stealing. And out of the prison, we see him going again to, to steal. Mm. Or even sometimes in those days where you have to have these uh, Barbie shoes, you know, when armed yeah. robbers mm -hmm. are being shot at the Barbie. Yes. You yes. see, has some pickpockets, even at the scene, mm. Mm. Uh, mm. something. So mm. it shows the animal. Uh, the best character in human beings. Mm. So you don't have to engage in physical Resort. something, whether you are fasting or not. Yes. In, in fact, Islam does not allow any form of physical something. If you are oppressed, find a way to sort out your oppression in a legal way. Mm. Mm. So that's the thing. So they have not invited, they have not allowed Ramadan to go through them. Mm. They might have gone through the Ramadan, <laughs> but they have not allowed the lesson. So how, how do they get to this point of allowing you know, this process go through them? And it becomes a character, it's a nature, a way of life. A way of life. Is it fear? No, it's, it's a personal decision. Mm -hmm. uh, it depends on individuals mm -hmm. what you want to make out of your life and out of your spiritual experience. Mm -hmm. Imagine, for example, now a, a whole building. To let me give this TVC as an example. It takes a lot of weeks, and perhaps weeks or months, mm -hmm. to get the building in, 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 in place. Yes, yeah, absolutely. But you don't pray for any other any bad thing to happen. Mm. If you have a structure out there, about 30 story building, if you employ a caterpillar or whatever in one day, it can destroy it that structure. Mm -hmm. So that, that's the analogy. If you're able to build your spiritual training mm. over a period of 29 months, and just and within one hour you decide to destroy it by choice. Mm. Because it's, it's, it's something by choice that you mm, do. Yes. So if you have imbibed the lesson of discipline, caring for others, and many of People don't know that even Ramadan even goes beyond just abandoning or abstaining from food. Yes. If you Very had cool. fasted in Ramadan in an illegal house or in a, 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 with a legal partner or with legal resources, I say, okay, let me give a charity out of you. are just wasting your time. Mm -hmm. So you are supposed to have entered the process with a clean heart, with clean resources, with clean stuff. So that will also impact your life thereafter. Mm -hmm. You can continue. So that is, so you don't go into bad ways. After the Ramadan, and that is a uh, means of right. allowing to. Go. Let's quickly also bring the lessons to mm -hmm. uh, what we see in the country. We talk about the lesson of unity, patience. We know what the conversation has been. Uh, a lot of persons will say that after the election, Nigeria has never been as divided as it is now. We have this politics of identity you are this, uh, I am that religion, you are from this place, ethnicity, and all of that. How do we bring these lessons to bear? now to unify us as a nation, nation building? Well, I think it, a lot depends on our political leaders and religious leaders. Mm -hmm. Number one, the political leaders, I mean, I've been a fan of this, your program for quite a while. You see Nima, you see Tokpe, you see Mariam, it's all of them here. Yeah, you know? thank you. YK and all of them. Yeah. So nobody talks about religion mm -hmm. at all. They all share their views, their ideas. Yeah. So it is the politicians that actually promote this for their personal purposes. And we follow them, mm. hook, line, and singer. singer. We've been here now, Christian, Muslim, here and there. Nobody, Nobody cares. talks about that. Yes. Even in a normal Nigerian family, you have a Muslim, you have a Christian, you have non-religious, whatever. When Salah comes, you celebrate together. Mm -hmm. When Christmas comes, you celebrate together. Neighbors. Uh, no, neighbors. Mm -hmm. so, um, so our value system will need to change. You probably will have seen a viral video uh, somebody praying that a child should be among those who will <laughs> steal Nigerian money. <laughs> Yes. What, what value is that one promoting? Mm. Yes. Praying for his Moral a five, year old, no, five days old Death child. child. Yes. Yes. That may God put him among those who will steal Nigerian money. Mm. And somebody yes. who said that is still working freely without being arrested. I mean, so that is not religion. So that is a wrong way of promoting value. So we need to, our religious leader need to do something along that line that let us know that we need to have good values. Mm -hmm. system. Secondly, our political leader, we should not allow them 
because when the Boko Haram people or whatever strikes, they don't ask they don't care. whether. Mm -hmm. in fact, they even, mm -hmm. So, just to let you know that it's not about religion, mm -hmm. it's about political agenda mm -hmm. under the guise of ethnicity or under the guise of mm -hmm. people abusing, misusing, and disusing religion mm -hmm. and ethnic affiliations. That mm -hmm. is just it. So, as we welcome. Unfortunately, we okay. have limited time. Okay. Okay. Except you can quickly ask. The yeah, I was. I was just. Seconds. I was just going to ask him to give Nigerians a message of hope as yeah. we transition into a new government. Right. Yes, I think uh, we need to be very hopeful, mm -hmm. and that is hope is what keeps everybody alive. Absolutely. So if you're able to do that, that and again, you see, Nigerians have always failed to take their leaders to account. Mm -hmm. After the elections, after the campaign, I will do this, I will bring this bridge, I will give you children, I will give you... <laughs> <laughs> you don't, right. Accountability is always missing. We don't yeah. get them to, to yes, you say we'll do this. Yes. So it's, it's, it should be a process, not an event. All right, mm. all right. We have voted, we give them a job to do. They are supposed to serve us with our continuous monitoring them mm -hmm. and calling them to order when they fail to do the right thing. All right, we thank have to uh, wrap things up here now. We must thank you, Professor Amidu Sani, for your time thank you. uh, thank on you, the sir. program. Thank you. It's been an interesting run thus far. Uluwato uh, Biloba, Bina Damola, I'm sure that uh, a lot of our viewers have known you now and we'll be looking forward to seeing you next, tip, next week. This is where we draw the curtains on the program. Up next will be the beautiful game. So bye now and take care of yourself. Bye. <laughs>